a woman preacher? Give me a break. Sunday, June 14th, 2020. We are in, still in the coronavirus George Floyd world protest era. <sighs> My friends, we have to keep this church from going adrift. <laughs> we need priests bearing the ark of the covenant of the Lord to lead us through these troubled times. We need divine leadership. A woman preacher? Let me tell you this. The entire sweep of the Bible and its principles, precepts, and ordinances, the general thrust and the particular thrust of God's word, the Bible, nowhere endorse women to lead the people of God. You know what we need? We need divine leadership to get us out of this mess. Look in your Bible dictionary or whatever research facilities are at your disposal and study the Levitical priesthood. These the Levites were the tribe that had the obligation to bear huh, the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, which is God's presence with his people. Now, his presence is enfolded in his word. Women preachers, it's all right if you preach to women. But it's all wrong for you to try to preach to men. Let's look at the Bible and see what the Bible says here. Joshua 3 and 3 says, And they commanded the people, saying, When ye see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God, and the priests, the Levites bearing it, then ye shall remove from your place and go after it. All right. Consider, if you will, Joshua 3 and 13. There it says, and it shall come to pass as soon as the soles of the feet of the priest that bear the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, shall rest upon the waters of Jordan, that the waters of Jordan shall be cut off from the waters that come down from above, and they shall stand upon and heap. The water's going to pile up. <laughs> and stand still for people of God <coughs> to come through. Subject of his message, two-word subject, followed by a question mark. Women preachers? Uh-uh. I want you to know, first of all, my friends, that in this time in which we live, I look back to our heritage. I look back to the SCLC, that is the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. 
I'm a child of that commerce. I'm a product of this SCLC. My mother was in the SCLC. And I submit to you that Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who is the chief executive officer of that organization, and all of his associates, almost to the last man, were analogous to the priest in our text. I want you to know and understand that God's people were organized. Black pastors and preachers leading the SCLC could be called the priests. The Levites, men whose livelihood were derived or came from the tithes and offerings of the people. I could have developed last Sunday's message entitling God's tax law. I could have developed that message into a half a dozen different series and departments. I left it alone. We need divine leadership. I want you to know that the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord is unquestionably entrusted into the hands of preachers the sons of Levi, priests, if you will, whose inheritance, watch this now, the priests had an inheritance. Their inheritance is the Lord's resources, tithes and offerings. These are and have always been divine leaders. Whew. I don't want to worry about what Peter Drucker said about leadership and the market is flooded with books and magazines and other publications and turn papers and masters and PhD theses having to do with leadership. Huh. But you want to know what real, true, good, and wholesome, God-ordained leadership is? You need to look at that Levitical priesthood. Hmm. Moses. Mr. Moses. Led the people so far and then he died. God had a replacement. Another God-appointed leader. And Joshua exercised authority over the priest, gave them instructions, and the priest who were entrusted with the Ark of the Covenant, the emblem of the presence of God with his people, followed Joshua's instructions. Who are you getting instructions from today? Are you a part of God's people who willingly follow divine leadership? Or are you seeking and climbing up another way? Let me tell you what's happening here. This women preacher movement It's an abandonment of our heritage. And it has its roots in feminism, lesbianism, women's rights. They all mixed up in the same thing. When you get into that bunch, you have already abandoned and forfeited your biblical heritage. And I'm appointed by God to tell you so. Each of the 12 tribes were given standing. Each had a 
representative. Before they crossed the Jordan, they were supposed to go and pick out a man out of all the 12 tribes. So there was an organizational structure, organization among the people of God. We need to be organized if we're going to move this thing. I heard the girl up there on the, uh, 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 the report in Minneapolis saying that she don't care if the target burned down. Very passionate and uh, uh, emotional speech. The fault is that it came from the wrong lips. Is there... My friend, a black organizational structure among we Africans who live in the USA today? Is there a plan for our future? I'm instructed to choose my words carefully. And I did so when I said Use the expression, we Africans who live here in America. My friends, they have patched up the Constitution again and again and again. 13th Amendment, 14th Amendment. And then they come out with a slew of civil rights bills trying to make us Africans fit into the fabric of the new United States government. We haven't fitted in yet. They fought that civil war. 600,000 Americans died in that civil war to try to make the Africans fit into the fabric of the American government. And my friend, we have not fitted in. And you are listening to the voice of an, me, an economic slave inside the city of Linden, Alabama today. Whole purpose of slavery was for black folks, for white folks to make a living off black folks. And my friends, it's going on big time now all around. Slavery. By another name, we need divine leadership. Always black men have been assaulted. The family structure in the black community has been constantly assailed. The house coming up, they'd pay, uh, uh, they would pay welfare to our women and keep our black men unemployed. And they'd send the welfare woman around there to check on the status of the household. And she'd go in in the bedroom of the mother and she, the welfare checker wouldn't stop till she'd look under the bed, look for shoes. She'd see a man's shoes under that bed. That household get cut off welfare. We never fit it in. Where is the plan for our future? I tell you where we need to start. We need to start in the Bible. That's the plan. God has given us a plan. Rather than living by the Bible, black America is living by the TV. That's right. We go by the TV instead of by God's word, the Bible. And I hereby now on this 14th day of June, the year 2020, I hereby now call for a burning of all televisions in black America. Get that devil out of your house. You think he's your friend? You think he 
appreciate the fact that black lives matter. Only thing matter to Mr. TV is black money. And we do a good job of managing our own money. We need divine leadership. I can say what I say because God got my back. The deacon board, the trustee board, the ushers in the choir, and the paying pew, huh, they don't have my back. I can say what I, 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 I can say what I say because God has ordained and authorized and commissioned me to say what I'm saying today. In Chicago, we got a black lady running for mayor of the city of London now. She needs to go back to the experience of Chicago where Chicago elected its first black mayor. They had the votes to do it. We have the votes in London to elect a black mayor. No problem there. But the secret to be learned from Chicago is that there was a plan formulated by the grassroots organizations in the city. And whew, the mayoral candidate, Washington said, it's not the man, it's the plan. It's not the candidate who is running. It's the plan and platform that the candidate is running on. You want to be elected mayor, you get a plan. Submit your plan. Anybody can run a plan if it's a well thought out plan. Today it seems to me that every person has his own private plan for the future of black America. And that plan practically lacks any divine leadership. What's the problem, Reverend? Compromise. That'll do. You scratch my back and I scratch your back. Concessions. Turning a blind eye. Saying and rationalizing these beliefs with the notion that we live in a new age. It's a computer age and we just have to go with the changes in the time. No. God has not changed, will not change, does not change. And what's good for the goose is good for the again. What is good for Israel is good for black America. You need to learn that. And if you don't have a plan, personal, individual plan, if your life is void of spiritual nourishment, you need to get it right. You need to get it right. How do you get it right? You go to John 3 and 16, and there you will learn that you are loved by God and Jesus Christ. Jesus said to Nicodemus, except you be born again. My friend, all you women preachers, let me tell you something. You need to get in your place and stay there. Get born again. It's all right to teach women, but Women preachers need to shut up and sit down. Now that's what you need. You need to get saved. You need to teach your children to keep their pants pulled up around their waist. You need to clean the house for the husband to come home to. Now unto him who's able to keep us from falling, unto him who's able to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding great joy. Now unto him the only wise God, to whom be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now henceforth and forevermore. 
Bless my Lord to be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love. Grant that we may be the recipients of divine leadership on this 14th day of June, year of our Lord 2020. We will give your name the praise. Amen and goodbye.